Hello and welcome to yet another Mora Nova webinar. For those of you who are new to us, should you have a question, just type your question into the question pane and I will answer it as soon as I can. Our subject today, Substance Test Part 1. Today we will be showing you how to test with a single substance, how to amplify that substance and take it to therapies and uh, also store it for therapies uh, beyond the scope of the substance test. Naturally to this effect we have already chosen a patient. I'm just going to select our test patient as I usually do. And we have done the 40 point measurement within substance uh, within the EAV module. Either the 40 point measurement or the points of interest to us. Don't forget when you're finished with your EAV measurement to select the newest measurement at the bottom here so that the values that we just measured get transported into substance test. When we go into substance test we have to select either mode A bar, I'm sorry I just realized <clears throat> I'm still in German here. Just change that over. Apologies for that. We have to select either mode A bar. Uh, I remind you mode A bar is for toxic substances, uh, toxins such as allergens, heavy metals, that kind of thing. And mode A is for medications such as homeopathic medications, oligo elements, vitamins, etc. Anything that's good for the body. In today's example, I'll be testing in mode A bar. I select mode A bar and click continue. My default test set here is allergy, but should you want to change your test set, simply go to test sets at the top and select the test set from the list and press accept. To open the allergy test set on the left, simply select it. And you can either double tap it to open the uh, respective test set or simply the simplest way would be simply to press the open group at the bottom here and it will open the group for you. <clears throat> I'll be using the major allergens as an example for today uh, and I'll be using amalgam. Again I'm working on a PC here and not on a uh, Mora Nova, an actual Mora Nova, so uh, I'm kind of limited to what I can do. Many thanks to our IT guys for uh, setting this up for me. I select my substance and there are a few things I need to make sure of before I begin testing. First, I would require an adequate measurement point. An adequate measurement point for allergies such as this would be a systemic a point or a vessel of vol. Good vessels for this are the circulatory system on the hands, uh, allergy, triple warmer and the nervous system for things like heavy metals or uh, for example the herpes virus is also good to be tested on the nervous system. For today's example I'm going to use the um, circulatory system seeing as it is it has a value of 91 it is clearly a pathological value i remind you that to test substances the point has to be in a pathological pathological range i.e anything above 60 or below 40 on our measurement dial a value such as 50 here on the triple warmer would be would not be adequate for testing substances as we would not have no reference value. I select my point and I need first thing I need to do is naturally verify my mode. Am I in the correct mode for the test uh, that I want to do? I am in mode A bar and I also need to turn on my ELH i.e. I need to turn on the substance and make it active and ready for testing. To do this, simply click on the substances button here and you'll notice that the ELH1 bar on the top right hand corner has now become 
green. It is generally grayed out when these substances are turned off. At this point, I test my patient with an amplification of seven. The amplification of seven represents the original substance when it was recorded. So I test my patient and for this substance, in this case amalgam, to be a burden, we have to have an improvement of at least 10 scale values. By this I mean we have to go, we have to improve in the direction of 50 because our ultimate goal is to get the dial here within this green range, i.e. between 45 and 55. So an improvement here would be a value for this specific point of at least 80 scale values. As you see at the bottom here, I started with 91, a clearly pathological value, and if amalgam is a burden, it should improve my point to at least 80. We'll admit that in this case, the improvement was of 80, and my dial is around, uh, I'm sorry, was at least 10 points, and my dial is lying around 80 scale values. Now that I've found the substance that is burdening my patient, I need to find out how much of this substance can I uh, take away without causing damage. So to this effect, there that the substance was uh, uh, an improvement or improved the, the, the body, we're going to memorize that substance by clicking the Memorize button. And you'll notice that next to Amalgam, there is a small green arrow. That means that we've told the computer to uh, save the substance for later use. I now begin with my amplification. I can amplify to double the amount and test again. You will immediately notice that the dial begins to fall towards 50. Sometimes we need to amplify more, sometimes less, <clears throat> depending on the, the patient. We'll admit that our amplification is 28, and now I am lying with my uh, measurement needle neatly in this 50 range, in this green range up here. Once I've found my substance and my amplification, I can now begin the therapy. I simply go down here to start therapy. A new window will show, giving me a therapy mode option, continuous or pulse pause. Rule of thumb, continuous is for mode A bar and pulse pause is for mode A. The only exception to this rule is color. If you're using color therapy, you can use either pulse pause or continuous. I have found that continuous works exceptionally well with color therapy. But general rule of thumb, of thumb mode A bar continuous and mode A pulse pause. Should you wish to change the therapy time, it is norm normally around five minutes, simply click on this little pin on the side here and you can set the therapy time in this small window. I'm going to set it to one minute so we can so I can demonstrate the um, this, this, the substance impregnation after the therapy is finished. Should you want to save a new time, you simply click on the save icon on the right hand side. If you do not click on the save icon, the therapy will run for one minute this time only and the next time it will revert back to its standard time. Then click on the therapy start button and the therapy window opens up. You'll notice that all the electrodes, hands, feet, head, the double electrodes, they're all set to output because mode A and mode A bar are always outputs. The only input to these two modes is an exogen substance, i.e., in this case amalgam, can also be homeopathic, it can also be a native substance uh, that you're using on the front beaker, the left-hand beaker on your device 
on the front of the device. To test native substances, it works exactly the same way. Place the native substance in the beaker, test for improvement, amplify, and go to therapy. The only difference is that the ELH at the bottom here will not display the substance naturally. You also notice, I've run out of time, You also notice that the ELH1 on the top right hand corner is also lit up blue. My channel is set to mode A bar, and in this case, the filters have been turned off. I'll get to that in just a moment. And my amplification is set to the exact amplification I had when I tested. There is also a physiological, uh, um, I'm sorry, attenuation of the therapy mode. This simply means that uh, it starts at 28 amplification and over this given time period of one minute, it slowly goes down to zero amplification. That is something that is preset and cannot be controlled within substance test. We're approaching the end of the therapy now. And once the therapy finishes, we get a question if we want to uh, um, impregnate a neutral substance. I can either start it or skip it. Naturally, to this effect, we have to have our uh, neutral substance in the central beaker, the double beaker on the front of your device. Sometimes, we'll notice that we measure a certain substance, in, as our example here, amalgam, and we amplify to, let's say, 19. And we're just outside the green area. We cannot get our point to balance out. And if I amplify more, I lose resonance, and the needle shoots back up to the original value, which is 91. And if I amplify less, I cannot get to the 50 zone. To overcome this, we simply use the potentiation bar at the bottom. Of, we select D3. We first go back to our last best amplification, i.e. the amplification that gave us the best value. And then we select the potentiation bar at the bottom. And we keep selecting it until we land up within this 50 range, within this green range. Then the same thing applies. We start the therapy, continuous for mode A bar, and the therapy starts. The only difference now is that on my channel here, I have a band pass with, a, with filter set uh, for, in this case, D6, and naturally the selected amplification. These are not uh, numbers that you need to remember uh, because they are preset for you within the potentiation bar. Sometimes we require other therapies and we need to take the substances with us to um, secondary therapies. To this effect, we simply highlight the substance we want, and it must be marked with a green arrow, and we click on channel one. Now you'll notice that the green arrow has now changed to a small one that indicates that the substance has been stored in channel one. Again, rule of thumb, substances such as mode A or mode A bar substances, we store in channel one, and in channel two, we normally use HD bar or endogen substances, patient-owned substances, such as a small drop of blood or uh, urine, um, saliva, etc. To verify what is in channel one, we simply click on the information button here, and it will show us the substance or substances that are stored in channel one. 
multiple substance testing and how we amplify those we'll be doing in approximately two weeks at our next webinar. That will be on the 9th of May. Once I've stored my substance in the channel, it is now available to me across all modules and all therapies. In other words, should I leave here, go back to the main menu, I'm going to open up the Mora Optima module, and you'll notice that the substance is available to me in Mora Optima. And this continues like this through all modules. Even if I go down to the therapy programs, I'll select Amalgam Detox, press Start, and you'll notice that the substance is loaded and in therapy already. Now, naturally, this also applies to basic therapies. If I go to the basic therapies, and I start a therapy, you'll notice that my ELH1 is lit. That means that the substances that I have within channel 1 are being used. Unfortunately, this is not always what we want. Uh, sometimes we just want to run a basic therapy without substances loaded. It doesn't mean we have to go back to substance test to unload or delete the substances that we've selected. We simply click here on ELH, on this ELH on button, which now turns to ELH off. And when we start a therapy, we notice that the ELH1 and ELH2 indicators are now red. That means that the substance has been parked and uh, is not being used for the specific therapy. Naturally, to turn that back on, we simply tap the button again, and the substances will be available to us. So, just a quick recap. Always check your mode when you go into substance test, depending on what uh, you want to test. Ensure that your amplification is at 7 and that your substances are on. Select the substance you wish to test and the ELH bar should be green. If the substance shows an improvement of at least 10 values, we begin to we memorize it and we begin to amplify. Once the correct amplification has been found, we can then start therapy. Again, continuous for mode A bar, start the therapy and the therapy begins. I will stay online a few more moments should you have any questions. I uh, hope you'll join us again on the 9th of May for Substance Test Part 2, where we'll be covering uh, the testing and therapy with multiple substances and how we're going to amplify uh, these multiple substances. Thank you once again. I thank you for your attention, and I hope to see you soon.